All right, hi, this is James with the onehoursmarthome.com and today we are gonna show you how to wire up a light switch or a lighting circuit. So uh, before we get too far, please like, subscribe to this video or check us out at onehoursmarthome.com. You can also click on the links below if you wanna support us. So that is always appreciated, it helps us bring good videos to you. So a uh, couple things that you should have before you get started, um, wire, Strippers, wire cutters, that's what we got right there. We'll put a link to that. Uh, screwdriver, it's a good idea. And pliers, preferably lineman pliers, but today I've just got a regular set of pliers because that was what was close to me today. And uh, some wire nuts, okay? So that's what these are, wire nuts right here. And uh, obviously, you need whatever junction boxes that you're going to install, as well as a light switch. And uh, what this is right here, uh, Romex wire. Okay, so uh, depending on the local codes, you should use either a 14 or 12 gauge Romex wire, or if you live in an area where conduit's required, um, then the wire would go inside of conduit rather than this plastic sheathing here. So uh, this is a uh, three wire Romex wire. So it's got uh, white for neutral, the unshielded uh, wire right here, this bare copper, that's the ground, and this black one here, that is the hot wire. So what we've got here is a setup today where uh, you've got your power coming in. We're just going to say this is your electrical panel, your main electrical panel. It also could just be like an outlet in a room and you want to add a switch and a light uh, to a room. So maybe a room that doesn't have a ceiling light right now, you want to add something like that. So that's what we're going to demonstrate. We're going to show you how to add a light switch, not just how to wire up just a switch with existing wiring, but how to do the whole process if you were building a new home, renovating, and you wanted to add a light switch and a light bulb or multiple light bulbs that were all on the same circuit. So this over here represents power from your electrical panel or power from an outlet in a room. So we're gonna get started and um, just for timing and make everything a little bit shorter, I already stripped the wires here, but uh, generally about three eighths to half an inch is uh, what you wanna strip the wires. Um, it really just depends on what size wires you're using, how many wires are going in there. I, I typically strip about three eighths, works pretty good for me. Um, so what we're gonna do first is, this is our incoming power. We've got hot, ground, neutral. So we are gonna match the wires up. We're gonna do white to white, black to black, and the unshielded copper to the ground green over here. So I'm just gonna get started with that. Throw these in here. And we'll try and do everything so that you can kind of see what's going on when I wire this. All right, so we've got our wires here coming in. And uh, now we're going to wire them up with the wire nuts. So uh, wire nuts, uh, actually, there are different size wire nuts depending on the different gauge of wiring. And uh, it'll tell you how many wires can go in each nut. So let me see if this will show up here. I've got one of the wrappers for wire nuts here, and it tells you for a yellow wire nut, uh, you can see here, you can get two or three 14 gauge wires, which is what we've got here. Or you could do one to three 12 gauge wires. So we're gonna get this wired up and uh, show you what's going on, but uh, most of the time on the packaging, it's gonna tell you what those wire nuts should be used for. So that's an important part of this process. All right, so we're gonna, Wire up the white wires over here. Okay. And this is the incoming power. We're gonna wire up the hot wire over here. And bear with me, this is gonna take a while for all this stuff. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but uh, being on the clock, it's harder than you might think when you're doing this stuff. So uh, being able to wire your own lighting is gonna save you a ton of money. Uh, if you feel comfortable doing this kind of work. Always you wanna make sure the power is off before you do any of this kind of work. You don't wanna get shocked, that's no good. And I always recommend um, you know, wearing shoes and socks. It's actually insulator a little bit if you were uh, gonna get shocked. You don't wanna ever do any kind of wiring regardless if the power's off um, around a wet environment or uh, anything like that because water's a conductor, it's not good for you, all that kind of stuff. It's more dangerous than when you're in a drier environment. 
So uh, those are just some electrical t safety tips. When you're checking to make sure the power's off, it's always good to use a non-contact voltage meter. So we will uh, put a link to one of those or a multimeter. Some of the multimeters now have uh, built-in detection to see if the power's on or off. But uh, non-contact voltage meter, you know, they're a couple of bucks, somewhere usually in the range of like 10 to 20 bucks. And uh, it's a worthwhile tool to prevent you from getting shocked. And uh, always good to know. The other thing is... Uh, a lot of gloves have, like if you get a leather glove, a standard leather glove, um, or like the mechanics gloves, which I really like, um, they have usually enough leather in them that you will not get shocked uh, with a live wire. Now, I'm not recommending that, and there are different types of mechanics gloves. I'm just telling you what I have found, and they need to be the ones that are leather with not a whole bunch of mesh in them. If you've got too much mesh, the mesh, you can get shocked right through that mesh because it's like, you know, porous. So the next thing that we're going to do, we've got our main incoming power. This is going to be where we're going to locate the light switch. So we're going to pull the wires into here. Okay. Get those into the switch box like so. And we're just going to tighten this down here. So this is our switch box. This is where the wires are coming in from our electrical panel um into the light switch that we're going to install here so i'm just going to tighten this down here and a lot of you are going to have uh probably plastic electrical boxes so you won't have to do this jazz that i'm doing here um it just depends on where you're at locally the only thing that they had available was these metal boxes so i'm using the metal boxes uh but you know plastic is is pretty common in a large part of the country. It really just depends on your local codes and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we've got from the junction box wired into our switch box. The next thing we gotta do is we're gonna bring the wires from our switch up to our light that we've got here, okay? So we're gonna pull that in and then uh, get this stuff wired up. So I've already got these stripped, you can see that. Uh, once again, black, hot, white, neutral, and uh, the unshielded is the ground now just some terminology so you know when you have a wire that comes into us which is providing power that black that's hot okay and then the white is the neutral that's a return path for the current and the ground is for your protection it's uh if there's a fault in the system or a fault in, in an electrical device it provides a path for the current to go so that you don't get shocked but once you have it going from the switch to a light bulb or a series of light bulbs, the black wire, or what was called the hot, the uh, path for the current, we typically call that a load wire because that's going from the switch to the load. Um, that's just some terminology you should know when you're doing this um, because that's how it is commonly referenced. So the black wire, when it's going from a switch to a load, like a light switch, or a, uh, sorry, a light bulb or series of light bulbs, we typically call that a load wire. So that's what we got coming in. All right, so we're gonna pull this in here. We've got that. Now we're just securing down our, our little, uh, our nuts that go in there. And we're gonna wire this in. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of like the basics of electrical wiring. Um, we've got other videos that we're going to show you about how to wire smart switches, which is uh, one of the things, one of the reasons that uh, we're doing this video. But uh, this is just a standard light switch. I'm a big fan of smart light switches. I've got them all the way throughout my home, and I use those uh, you know, every day to turn on and off my lights with my voice or uh, from an app and all that good stuff. Um, but you know, some people are just doing remodeling, and they want standard light switches. Um, you know, and that, and that's, uh, that's okay. So we want to make sure that you have a resource just to know how to do standard wiring in your home. There's all kinds of codes and all that kind of stuff that you should follow. But, uh, this is a very good basic primer. And basically it's like giving you a wiring diagram for how you need to wire everything up. Okay. So we've got these wires coming in. We've got plenty of length there. And then now we're going to, uh, get the wire from the switch box into our, uh, where our light fixture is going to be installed. So let's get that installed. Alrighty, let's route the wires through there. And uh, 
this wiring, uh, this would be, you know, the same routing path that you would use if you are uh, installing this in a wall. This is just all open air, so you can see the wiring diagram for demonstration purposes and all that good stuff. Obviously, you want to pick out the right switch boxes. You want to make sure that you uh, secure these things properly and get the right switch box for whatever your local code or ordinances are and all that good stuff. Um, but for this, uh, it's a good demonstration of how everything goes together and another thing that i always recommend is if you are doing any kind of electrical wiring get a deep box okay what we've got here is a deep box but you can get much shallower boxes something like this well with smart switches i don't know if you can see this um that extra half inch or inch makes a huge difference it's much easier to mount a smart switch inside of a light switch so i always recommend when you are doing this kind of work that you upgrade the electrical boxes or you just put in the right size electrical box to begin with which will make your life easier so for the light switch the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to wire together the neutral wires because for a standard single pole switch which is what this is called where it's only controlling one light fixture or a set of light fixtures from one location the neutral wire is not used so we wire those two together all right and we can just shove that down there because we don't need that for right now now you've got the ground wire okay now if you look on the back here you have got a uh, terminal here for the ground wire so we've got two options here we can kind of wrap both these around uh, this wire or we can take another small piece of wire which is I think what I'm gonna do right now and we can uh, use that ground wire as a connector and it just kind of makes things a little bit easier than getting uh, all kinds of wire stuck all in one place so I'm just gonna strip this here pull out the ground wire and we're just gonna do that so you can see what's going on and what I mean here um, another thing to know is that 14 gauge wire is much easier to work with than 12 gauge wire um, just because the gauge references the thickness. So uh, actually higher gauge wire, like 14 gauge wire, is less thick than 12 gauge wire. And uh, 12 gauge wire is thicker than 14 gauge wire. So you can see we've, uh, we're adding our extra little ground wire there so that we can easily wrap this around the switch. And uh, what you're going to want to do is you want to make a little like loop so you can... Uh, you can put this around the terminal on the light switch, just like so, okay? And there we go, we can get our ground wire in. Uh, 14 gauge wire is easier to work with, but there are limitations in terms of the loads that you can have on a 14 gauge wire. 12 gauge wire has more uh, capacity for more current. So 12 gauge wire, all things being equal, is easier, or actually is better, but it's harder to work with. So um, you have different limitations for how much, uh, how many devices and how much power can be used on an electrical circuit based on the gauge of wire because the gauge of wire is what causes resistance on the, you know what, I'm gonna do this the other direction. So it, it helps um, when you're doing this, if you get the loop to go in the same direction as you're going to be screwing in then it kind of like tightens the wire around the terminal that you're using um, you'll see this in a minute but there we go and now we've got our ground wire connected here and what we've got left to do is connect our hot wire which is coming in and our load wire which goes to our uh our light switch or not our light switch excuse me to our a our light so uh what i like to do here you know and now it depends uh you can either make a hook and put this in like this or some light switches have these quick connect things which i like which is just like that okay and that's just a really nice way to uh get everything secured in there so uh we've got our hot wire coming in i always put that on the bottom here Make sure you've got the light switch oriented in the right direction. It's got a little logo here. It says the grand, so that's the bottom of the light switch. And then now we're going to secure. So we've got the hot in the bottom of the switch, the incoming power, and that's black. That's coming from our electrical panel, okay? 
And then on the top of this single pole switch, we are going to install, we are going to install our load wire. Okay, so let's get that in there, make sure we get a good connection. So you can see these quick connect terminals, super easy, as well as it kind of like shields the wire. Um, and then you need to tighten these down, make sure you've got these nice and tight. All right, so we've got that in there. Uh, one thing that's counterintuitive when you're doing this, and I probably should have made this wire a little bit longer, is that uh, actually having longer wires in a junction box makes it easier to wire things because you can fold the wires easier and get them to fit into a junction box a little bit easier. You know what I'm gonna do? If you've got wires that are being tricky, I always like these electrical connectors with uh, wings on them because it gives you more leverage to twist them and turn them. And once you kind of see those wires twisting together, and then you got a good connection. You saw that yellow one, it kind of came undone there. So now we've got everything wired up. Uh, you've got your neutral wires back here, the white. You've got your hot coming in right here in the bottom. And you've got your load wire going up to the light fixture over here. And all we got left to do now is wire up the light fixture and we're going to be good to go. So, uh, you know, you want to fold the wires kind of back in. This is like origami art here, how you fold these things. But the more wire that you have, the easier it is to fold and double back. And that's the other thing about working with 14 gauge. Um, it is easier to fold and get into an electrical box than 12 gauge. But like I said, it has less capacity um, for electrical current than 12 gauge. You can have more devices on 12 gauge wire if you've got the right circuit breakers and all that stuff. Uh, so that's always an important part of this. But uh, we'll get this screwed in here. It's uh, always a good idea too, if you've got a light switch like this, an older style light switch, I like to put electrical tape around the uh, terminals just because then if you're removing this switch when it's live, for whatever reason, if you need to test it or troubleshoot, um, it's easy then to kind of work with it and you don't have to worry about it hitting the metal box and causing a short circuit, which is not a good thing. You don't want that. With a plastic box, not a big a deal, but also it just protects you if you're working on it and you forgot to turn off the power or whatever. Um, to have that electrical tape over the terminals, you're less likely to get shocked. So that's a common practice that a lot of people do. And uh, I do recommend that if you are taking your time to do this. Okay, so the next thing we got here, we've got from the light switch, we've got our load wire, we've got a ground wire here, and we have the neutral wire. We are just gonna connect the, uh, we'll connect the ground wire first right here. Okay, and make a little hook. Let's see if we can't get that in there. Sometimes it's difficult to get these in there. There we go. And you can kind of bend it around once you get it in. And let's give us a little, a little bit more room so we can pull it tight here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna tighten up our ground screw. Um, you wanna have the ground because it does, like I said, it does protect you um, in the event an electrical system or device fails, the ground wire is meant to protect you. So here, it doesn't really matter um, which one you put on here. If you've got uh, the hot over here, or sorry, the load or the neutral, they're, they're both gonna do the same thing here. This is not like a smart light fixture by any means or anything like that. Um, some of them will have a label which tells you where you need to put the hot and where you need to put the neutral. But for the most part, a uh, simple light fixture like this and most simple light fixtures, it doesn't matter. So uh, for this, I'm actually going to strip a little bit more wire because what we've got going on here is uh, we're going to have to make a little bit more of a loop to get it on the terminals. So strip a little bit more wire there. Let's do the same over here. Okay. And if you rotate it, it's easiest. I got a little burr on that other wire, so it made it a little bit more difficult. Okay, and uh, use your pliers and you can make a little hook. 
on both of these. And you'd want to make sure you don't make them too long because you do not want them to come in contact with each other. Um, and if you make them too long, that, that can happen. And that is not a good thing. But uh, I think we've got, and you want to make sure it doesn't contact with the ground bar either, any of the ground wires. So just something to keep in mind. And we're going to put this white one over here and kind of get that tensioned. Right, now we're going to screw that down on that terminal. Okay, so we've got everything secured and now we are going to put the light fixture on here. Uh, put everything in place and this one just rotates in so you get it lined up with the screw holes that you've got here and let's see if we can't get this one on by sliding in no we will not be able to we got to take this one out to do what we need to do all right so we are going to slide this one on like that and we're going to put the screw back in. And I don't know, this has a, this light fixture has a pull chain on it. I don't know if a pull chain is on, but we will find out when I turn the uh, turn the power back on and see everything going on. Okay, so we have got everything wired up now. You can see how this works. Uh, you've got uh, your light switch here. You've got your light bulb. And we are ready to go. Now you should put the, uh, the cover back on this thing here, but uh, for the purpose of the video, we'll just kind of secure it real loosely. But uh, you always wanna make sure you've got everything properly secured. You've got uh, your light switch cover plates back on before you turn things on because you have a hazard of shock and all that kind of stuff. So we're just gonna put that on there for now though. And you can see how this works, okay? So we've got our incoming power, you've got your light switch, and you've got your light bulb. We're gonna go turn this on and uh, you guys can see this working. Okay. So the power is live right now. And let's see if that pull chain is on. There we go. So that is a working light bulb light switch. That is how you wire a light bulb. It's flashing right now because this is a smart light bulb that I installed here. So it's probably trying to connect to Wi-Fi or something like that. But uh, this is how you wire a light switch on, off. That is the light bulb that's blinking because it's trying to connect to Wi-Fi because I put a smart light bulb in. These are actually nice light bulbs. These are uh, from eTech City. They're just, they're an expensive way to control your lights with uh, with your voice or with your phone. So we'll put a link to that too below. But uh, this is the basic setup for a uh, light switch, how to wire a light switch, okay? So you've got your incoming power coming from either uh, another junction box or a circuit in your home or this could be directly from the electrical panel, the main electrical panel and circuit breaker. You've got your light switch here, okay, which we've got wired up and going to this, you've got the hot, load and neutral. And then from the light switch, you've got the neutral wires wired together. And then across the switch, you've got the hot wire and you've got the load wire, which then goes up to here, which is that black wire. And then you've got a ground circuit that protects you and has got all these different uh, devices grounded. So you've got the uh, actual light fixture grounded, you've got the lights, uh, light switch grounded, and then going back to the electrical panel, you've got that grounded as well. So uh, a ground wire protects the system, but if you were to put your hand in there and touch a live wire, you would still get shocked. So when I say protection, it doesn't mean that it's gonna protect you from getting shocked. It is in the event of a failure of, let's say this light switch or this light fixture, it's going to provide a return path for the current so that you don't get as much of a direct shot as you would if you just had a live circuit 
contacting something metal and short circuiting. Either way, it's bad. You don't want any of that, but it is a protection system. So that is a helpful thing. And most new code requires you to have a ground wire pretty much everywhere. Some older houses are grandfathered in, but uh, just in terms of fire safety and electrical safety and everything, you want to have a ground wire wherever possible. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. We hope this helped you learn how to wire a light switch. We're going to have other ones to show you how to wire a smart light switch, how to replace a light switch, and all that good stuff. So thank you for watching. Please visit onehoursmarthome.com, and please click on the links below if you like this video or want to learn more, and uh, please send us your questions as well. Thank you. Bye.